Okay, right. I think you all think you can search and Google and Yahoo and I don't know what else. You can find information. But the moment when your lecturer is asking you to start finding information on the web, it's getting extremely difficult. So what I'm going to do um, in this session, I'm going to give you some tips on how to search and make that 40 million down to only 100 or 50 articles that you uh, can use. So I hope you will find the information useful. If you want to stop me, you're welcome. If you want to add a tip from your personal experience, you're also uh, welcome to do that. So, um, can be, and that is kind of, I put it here specifically because I want to say to you, it is very frustrating to search. Okay? It can take you hours if you do not do it the correct way. And trust me, this is the biggest issue that postgraduate students is having. The biggest complaint is, I can't find an article. There are millions out there. Why can't you find it? It is because you do not look in the right manner. Um, also, you can get nothing, or you can get so many that you would not be able to see all of it. This is because the World Wide Web is not indexed in a standard vocabulary like our libraries. Things are just floating there and people are just adding and adding. Many food, food science and nutrition journals are now available online. However, most of these subscriptions um, or most of these um, journals, we need to subscribe to them, need to pay for it. So if you come across something that you want an article, you need to pay for it, please use VUT's website, go through the library, and then you do not have to pay for the information. All right. Um, they will do tomorrow with you how to access um, the library's information sources. And if there is an occasional one, which we normally use only for the master's and doctoral students, that need to be bought, the library will do so, and you can request it. Um, contact the university librarians to assist you in this regard. Some journals have full text available free of charge and have a homepage where the information of the journal is made available, where you can get abstracts that can be easily accessed. If you think of yesterday, I showed you an article. I'm just going to put this one on. This is an abstract. So, okay, thank you. An abstract is basically a short summary written in a specific format. Um, it states the purpose of the study the methodology of the study, the finding of the studies, the implication of the research, practical implications, originality, and keywords, as well as the research paper. Some other articles will look different. Just want to see if I've got another. Um, this one. Got an abstract 
in a different format <coughs> and it is very short, but it comes, it boils down to a summary. All happy, what is an abstract? I know the first time I went to a conference and I was busy with my master's degree, I was thinking, now what on earth is an abstract? I don't know what's an abstract. And I learned the hard way what is an abstract. Nobody told me what's an abstract. I need to discover it for myself. Okay. So abstract, what I normally do, that you will see tomorrow in the library, they give you an abstract of an article. Read through the abstract. If that abstract interests you, download that article. Okay. You cannot read the whole article while you're sitting in front of your computer. It just takes too much time. So you read the title, you see, I like the title, this could be helpful. Then go and read the abstract. Um, and if the abstract is helpful and you find that interesting, related to your topic, then go and download that article. Otherwise, skip it. There are millions. You don't have to worry about them. <coughs> Then when we search the web, um, Van der Waltz gives us a few steps. He says that you have to analyze your topic before you begin. So you need to understand your topic. I gave you a topic, food waste. I want to hear from you thinking of food waste and we are going to work on food waste. What does food waste mean to you? Who wants to tell me? Sorry? Loss of money. Okay. What else? Except from loss of money. Give me a synonym for food waste. Or three words that means the same. Isn't plate waste also food waste? Plate waste. You have a plate and the people have eaten in your restaurant. They send the rest back. They don't want it. You scrape it out and throw it in the dustbin. What is that? That is plate waste. Okay. What else? Think of words in terms of wastage of food. going to be difficult to search if you don't have keywords. It's your field, ladies and gentlemen. You have to know what it's all about. Come on, we need to brainstorm now a little bit. Think. Hmm, I'm not going to give you the words. Food lost, great. So I would use food loss as a keyword. Go and search food loss. You might come up with something different than your neighbors. What else? Hmm. Going slow. I'm not going to give you the answer. It means it's your homework. You are going and make a list of 10 words 10 keywords that you must take tomorrow with you to the library to assist you in, ser in searching for articles on food waste. 10 keywords. So that's tonight's homework. All right. Point two, Van der Waals said you must use the Boulon technique. Oh, what's that? I'll explain. It says you must use truncation. I need to explain. You have to look after you've searched. The librarian will tomorrow show you a unique screen. And that screen you need to interpret and understand. So your library training tomorrow is going to be very important for you. Then there is a list of search tools that I will go through. I will give you some search tips 
and I will also help you to evaluate the information that you find on the web. Now, analyze your topic before you begin. To start, think of variants, synonyms, and related themes to find out what you want. So that is the homework for tomorrow. Ten of them. Take your topic, food waste. We need to brainstorm and identify keywords. Otherwise, tomorrow's library session is not going to assist you. The commonly used words may get irrelevant documents containing the word you search for, and it may not be related to your subject. If you are just going to search the word waste, what are you going to get? Ish, anything, everything, all the things. Not going to work. So you have to go tonight and find the key words on your topic. Boolean operators, what is that? The Boolean technique for searching provides you with the power to narrow down your search to a reasonable number of potentially useful documents. The search string can be very simple or very complex. More keywords and combinations of them can be used. So you can go and search for, you type in Google Scholar, cat, and you write or dog. You write food or waste. What are you going to get? All the articles with the word food in, all the articles with the word waste in it. Okay. You can also write cat or dog or pet or pets. You can put an S on the word and so on. So let me give you examples. Other um, Boolean operators that you can use, um, I've shown you or now. We can use and, we can use not, we can use an adjacent, um, and we can use grouping. What does each of them mean? If you do and, if you want to look at an article about um, pregnancy, you can look at pregnancy and smoking. So the articles that I'm, um, the computer must find for you should contain the word pregnancy and the word smo um, smoking. Think of five food waste. What was they find for you? Food and waste and loss of money. Yeah. And now you can combine your keywords. If you don't have these keywords, you will not know how to go and search. So these keywords are really key for you to know. We also have, look at this interesting one in OR. We can use diet or nutrition. Okay. Kind of similar, but still different. Um, you can use... Um, plate waste or food waste. Okay, another one. You can use then the word not. You can say you want the word in this example flavor but not infusion. Um, in culinary studies we talk about we infuse the food with flavor. No? So infusion is something different but it's also linked to flavor. So, example on plate, um, plate waste or food waste, hmm. you can say um, food waste, not beverage waste. Okay. Hmm. Now I give away something here. Some of you can do a project on the wastage of beverages. Now I'm thinking. So, what can we waste else? What things do we waste in the kitchen? We have food waste, we have plate waste. Bold words were the word, two words were waste. We can waste. Sorry? Chemicals. Cleaning chemicals. Cleaning chemicals. Cleaning chemicals. Cleaning chemicals. 
chemicals. Ah, but the topic is food waste. Mm -hmm. But we can waste. Yes, I like your idea. I'm not going to reject it, but that is, can you see, that is going to lead you in totally a different topic. All right. Because it's something different. What else do we waste? Oh, no, man, you must come now. You stand in front, you've got a knife in your hand. What do you waste? The what? You've got a knife. What do you do with a knife? And you've got an apple. What do you do with the apple? You cut the apple. Do you like the skin? No, what do you do with the skin? You peel it. What do you do with the peels? Yeah. Must I do all the thinking in this class? It's wastage. So what do we waste? Start thinking. You don't only waste food. You waste a lot of things in the kitchen. Go tonight and think, what are you wasting? From peels? Hmm. Maybe you want to look at plate waste, not vegetable waste. Did I give you another keyword? You have to listen carefully in this class because I'm not going to show you all the words. You must listen and pick ideas. Because it's very important that you get these ideas, you must start brainstorming and thinking. You've got all brilliant brains, that's you, is why you are in an advanced diploma. You must start thinking about these things. Go back to the nitty gritty thinking, the fine things. Think of what else do we waste. Tonight if you go home, Go and look at everything that you waste, and I guarantee you, you will have your 10 keywords. Just go and look in your own kitchen, what you are wasting. What goes in the dustbin? None of us is look. We can look at food waste, not dustbin. Hmm, there I've got one. I don't know these words. I haven't think about them. I create them as I go on with this lecture. Can you see? If you come across something, pop into your mind, that is what it means to brainstorm. You set a thing pop into your mind. If it pops in, go and make sure it works. Maybe dustbin doesn't work because we use dustbins for something else no, or more. No, we use the dustbin for waste. So the dustbin might work. You can reason with yourself. So you must ask yourself questions because the most important thing in this subject is to ask yourself questions. And if a question pops into your mind, Please stop at that question. Write it down and seek for the answer because questions pop in our mind because we are wondering and that creates an inquiry mind. This subject is all about your inquiring mind. I'm not going to give you the keywords. You must create them yourself. Otherwise, you do not learn how to come up with keywords. What we also can do is adjacent quotation marks. Look at this one, vitamin A fortification. If you are going to put it in inverted commas, the computer will look for those three words together. So if you put in a word placed waste, it will look for all the articles with plate and waste. If you put plate waste in inverted commas, go and do your search again and look how different it's going to look. Okay. So now, yo, you've got now a million of ideas. Can you see how many different things can you search now? So you are 50 in the class. I'm expecting 50 different proposals on the same topic. None of you might copy and have the same ideas. Okay. It must be 50 different ideas. One will do wastage of vegetables, one will do wastage of fruit, and here we go. Easy. Okay. You cannot have all the same title. You all have the same broad topic, but in that topic, what are you come up with and do a project on? And that is, or write a proposal that you want to do a project on. And that is what we are going to do this year in this subject. <coughs> okay, 
So you get how we do um, the inverted commas. So tomorrow you will be very clever when you get to the librarian. You can do it. Um, we can have grouping where we put it into brackets. We call it parasynthesis, where you have aroma and extraction in brackets. And you have flavor or taste. Yo, can you see now how many possibilities do you now have with your keywords? It just grow and it helps to narrow down. This last one will give you a very specific article. So you can look at um, plate waste in inverted commas and cost, both of them in brackets, and vegetables, not fruit. Hmm, can you see? Now you are going to search only for the waste on vegetables. Okay. So can you see how you narrow it down and how you use a combination of these words? So tonight, go and work out your keywords and start thinking of how you are going to combine it. It will help you a lot tomorrow when you, when you are going into the library and the librarian will assist you. Right. Um, truncation. Truncation is an integral part of keyword searching and it allows the user to incorporate variant words uh, in variant word endings to a search. It is used to search a word stem and retrieve all the variations of that stem. It can match anything, for example, micro. Would look for all the words, micro, in our field, which, if I put micro with a star, which thing will it find? Nutrition. Mm. Think of nutrition. Give me a word in the subject of nutrition that got micro in it. Microorganisms, micronutrients. Now I have a lot of them. Can you hear? So you see, now if you put in the word micro, it will give you all the articles with the word micro in it. Okay, that is what truncation means. All right. So if there is something else in the field that you can use, that's a great idea to use. Now, <clears throat> tomorrow the librarian will show you when you start searching, you open a search engine. It will give you a page and then you have to fill in blocks. Nah? Do you know how to book a train ticket on the internet? Yes. A bus ticket? Yes. It will ask you, where are you? Where do you want to go? Which day? What time of the day? Etc. No. That page we need to fill in. And in the library, um, we have pages like this. And you can write in that, not um, where you are and where you are going, but you can write there, you want only articles of the work of Labadarius. Can you remember I talked about him yesterday? Or you only want to have Maslow, but not the other Maslows in the world. There are many, many Maslows in the world. You just want the work of Maslow in terms of physical needs. You don't want the psychological needs. Your topic is about physical needs, not psychological needs. Okay. So, you can type in micronutrients in the one, and you know that micronutrients uh, will be, and you want specifically to look at vitamins. And then it will get you also all the articles on that. Can you see? So, it's the same. You just fill in the blocks. Okay. It can also tell you um, or ask you, from which year to which year do you want the information? Is the 1950s still relevant in terms of nutrition? No. It's a gone by era. It is, the 1950s is already mm, 70 years ago. No use anymore. So, there's another rule that I haven't explained to you in this subject. No source should be older than five years. So, 
It means five years ago is 2014 to 2019. So if you search in these blocks that you can put in the year, narrow your years down, you only want articles from this year to that year. <coughs> if you find nothing, try to make it from 2010 to 2019. No further. Um, it sounds like my son used to say, he refused to look at any movies older than 1990 because that's ancient. Mm. It was before he was born, so you don't want to look at it because it's just irrelevant to him. So with research, a lot of information gets irrelevant over the years. It changed. Um, I prepared last night for my lecture this morning in nutrition, and I was looking at the uh, green nutrition book that you all have, and there was still the information of 1999. Lavadarios find new information in 2013. In 1999, we had 12 million children under five who die per year. In, 1999, um, in 2013, that amount was reduced to 10 million. So it's 2 million less. I cannot still use the data of 1999. It's old. It's not relevant. So when you are going to look for articles, remember, even for all your other assignments, this is not only for my subject, it's for all your subjects, go and look for relevant, the newest information. Because things get old, it changed. That's why we have um, textbooks with new editions, because they add the new information to our textbooks. Okay. Um, <coughs> so... This is what the unique screen is about. Now they talk here, each search engine has its own unique search screen with a simple or an advanced option. All right. Do any of you have a clue what is a search engine? Who wants to guess? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Google is a search engine. Who is Google's best friend if you are an, a student? Google Scholar. It's another search engine. Okay. You can get Yahoo as a search engine. We can get Science Direct. We can get Emerald. Um, there are various search engines. I will show you now a little bit on different search engines. So what does Google give you? It gives you a block now. You can fill in any words that you like. That is a very simple one. You can look on the screen. Go and see if you can find in Google Scholar, especially the advanced search place. Then you click on advance. It will bring up a screen and it will give you little blocks that you need to complete. Like you complete when you want to have a specific bus ride from one town to another town on a specific date and time. Does that make sense to you? You all know this. Hmm. Just getting difficult if I'm lecturing it. But those advanced search, come and look for it. Because there you can narrow down and put in, you want only articles from 2010 to 2019 or from 2014 to 2019. So it gives you options to narrow down. You can also search just the author's names. You can also search article names. You can search keywords and so forth. There's different things that they ask you. Some of them have a, a whole screen full of um, different things that you, they can ask. It is recommended that it, the, um, in the beginning you start with simple option and then proceed to the advanced option. It will either have a facility where you have to select from a list of topics or search by words that you have to type. Then make use of your Boolean operators, like in that block, you say nutrition and food. Okay. Um, hmm. I just got another idea for food waste. We are cooking food too fast on the stove. What gets lost? Nutrients. 
Hmm. Maybe, just maybe. That's also wastage. Ah. Hmm. You think about that? Okay, so don't stop thinking about your topic. You can see where it pops in my mind. I give my mind some time to think, and then some things suddenly come out of nowhere, out of the blue. And that is the kind of things that you need to take cognizance of in this subject. So what I want to say, oftentimes in this class, I'm going to be Reverend Dix, okay? Not Lecturer Dix. So I'm not Prof Dix every day, I'm Reverend Dix. So today I'm Reverend Dix, I'm preaching to you. You make use of your brilliant brains. Use them, you have them. Give them some time to think. Give the brain something, leave it. You will come up with something later on. And the older you get, it longer takes. That's the only thing that happens. Okay. You can click on the search and find to start the process. I'm sure you all know it. Some search engines give even the option to select language and dates as I explain. Okay. There are search engines, many of them. Um, I'm not going to talk you through them. Um, this is when I, I written the first article searching the World Wide Web, which was published in the um, Agricultural Journal of Africa. And we had a lot of search engines. Um, I think except for Science Direct, they are all outdated today. So last night I updated it. And today, um, our five best ones are Google Scholar, Get Cited, it's another one. There is Microsoft Academic Search. There's Bioline International. There's a directory of open access journals. This one is also on the library's website. And there is Science Direct that you can also find on the list. I think the VUT list, I looked last night at it, there is more than um, between 20 and 30 different search engines on the library's website. The librarian will take you through them tomorrow. Um, some of them are specifically for engineering students, others are specifically for education students. So these ones that I've selected here are ones that is particularly in the field of food, health, nutrition, culinary studies, food science, and so on. So these ones, you can make use of, and I give you also um, the link um, to these. So I hope you will find them useful. <clears throat> then, when you are searching, make sure that you spell correct. What I didn't, sh oh yeah, search for both American and English spelling. For example, behavior and behavior, flavor and flavor. You can use also plurals if you cannot truncate. Truncate is that little star thingy. Avoid using the internet. Mm, this is a nice one. Did you realize that the internet is very slow in the afternoons? Uh, do you know why? Sorry? A lot of people in the afternoon. No, man. In the afternoon, it's morning in America. Then they all say good morning and they're all fresh and they're all on their computers. And you compete against all the millions of Americans. Okay. In the early morning, very early while we are sleeping, fortunately, during the night, we only have to compete with the millions of Chinese people. By the way, in Beijing City, there are one billion people just in the one city. We are 50 million in the whole of South Africa. Huh. Interesting, no? A lot of people in one town. Um, avoid, okay, yeah, I've done that. If you use an acronym, also use the full word. So if you want to search the WHO or the FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization, you can write it out as well. Use the abbreviation. This one is very important. Use a minute to save an hour. Read the instructions or the help screens on your search engine before doing the search. Be on the lookout for case sensitive settings. In other words, should it be written in capital letters or small caps? 
even that is important in this subject. Capitals are not capitals. Use the same words, then the synonyms, and then related terms in a, nav in a, diff in a number of different search engines. So don't go and use Emerald and say, ma'am, I get nothing. You must use Emerald Science Direct. Use five different ones. Okay. If you don't come up with something, go and use another one. And go on until you find something. Be sure to make a list of the ones that you've already used. Otherwise, you will not know that you've looked in Science Direct in plate waste and you go to emerald and there suddenly you are going to look at um, vegetable uh, waste and now you don't go back to the other one and search there because different search engines contains different information so you might just get something different in your search um, be sure to make a list of the ones that you've used to avoid duplication you will forget so sit with a pen and paper if you are searching tomorrow. For greater precision and comprehensiveness, try using complex searches or variety um, in your searches um, of advanced options. I've talked about that. And you can also look at frequently asked questions. And I see like... Um, Google is so interesting, they will, if you just scroll down on the page here at the bottom, they will ask the question that you might just add in a word and they will have some other whole question for you. Or they will have some other keywords for you. Hmm, another place where I can find keywords. Go and look there. Um, I searched new search engines last night and I have to really get my act together to narrow it down to what I specifically want and that it would be specifically helpful for you today in the class. So we deal more often than not with too much information. So don't get stuck in too much. Narrow it down. Right. <coughs> Criteria for evaluation of the worldwide uh, web information. Sometimes People are publishing rubbish on the internet. I can go and make, create a website for me. I can just put on what I want. I can tell you the biggest nonsense in life. And you might end up finding that. And another thing, here comes Reverend Dix again. Research is all about portraying the truth based on scientific ways. So, if our articles are wrong or it serves a specific person's objectives to make money, doesn't matter how they cheat you, be very careful. We are not allowed to use those. No? And the Americans are particularly good in that. They will tell you all these long stories about all these topics and they will go on until ever and a day. And then they'd never ever come to a point. And then they say, if you want the information, please buy it online at wah, wah, wah. Okay. Then you sit and listen for 15 minutes and oh, they just wasting your time. No. It's purely advertisement, purely making money. And that is what life and the world is all about. And we as academics, scholars, to do scholarly work, we need to get rid of all the noises around us. And we should be very careful. That is why we have to evaluate our sites. Like I said yesterday and earlier today, if a person is not prepared to put their name on, no good. If it is not a university or a reputable institution, I would rather go and listen to what somebody has published from Oxford Harvard or Cambridge University than somebody publishing from my own university. Because they have higher credibility and higher rankings in terms of research. Okay. So I don't say beauty's work is not good. That's what I'm saying. But do you get the point that sometimes people write 
just that they want. Do you all know the guy with the name Tim Noakes? Ever heard of Tim Noakes? Big nutritionist at UCT into sport nutrition who dared to say that um, pregnant or mothers who have little toddlers should give high protein, high fat diets. Yeah. He end up in court. Unfortunately, he end up winning the case. And I'm doubting the university with one of the top 50 in the world ranking that I have a person who can say something like that. The medical council tried to um, talk to him and um, punish him for that because what he forget, yes, it could work if you are in high income people who have lots of money and they can afford to buy organic food um, with all the other things around them. But why do we still want to have poor people? They need energy. Nah. So carbohydrates, food-based dietary guidelines of South Africa, should carbohydrates should be the basis of your meals. Ooh, you've been long time ago in nutrition one and two. Nah. Yeah. So what he's saying is direct into contrast with what the South African food-based dietary guidelines are saying. It might work, and he comes from a sport nutrition background. Eating high carb, um, high fat, high protein diets works in sport. Um, but one should be careful. If you eat high protein diet, it will damage your kidneys. So one needs to look at the whole picture. Do you hear how the truth is working? We are academics, we are scholars. We need to look at the whole picture. I cannot just take what I like and put in there. And that is what the research is all about. You cannot go and find what you want to find. You must go and find what the articles and what the people on the ground are telling you what is happening on the ground. Whether you like it or not. Okay. It's kind of when pick and pay sponsors you to do your research. Mm -hmm. In whose favor are you going to publish your results? Of course, pick and pay because you want them to give you more money to do your research. No. So can you see, we are sitting with ethical dilemmas. And we will do ethics also. Um, I think we will do that only next year, that we will look into ethical considerations in detail. What one is allowed and what is one not allowed. So sites need to be ethical. Um, if you are not prepared to, name your, to give your name, I don't doubt that you are ethical. If you don't give the year, hmm, I doubt it. If it's from an institution like a higher education institution, a department of health and so on, they've got professionals who gave advice and write articles and so on. Their information are um, better information than what just anyone from the street um, can tell you. So be careful. I'm not going to read through it. Um, I want you to be aware that, and that is why we use um, specific search engines and not any search engines, because articles that is written for research purposes are peer-reviewed. So I cannot go and publish anything in a journal and say what I want, or if I publish something, it gets read by three or four other people in the field to say, yes, this is quite in line with what can happen, or no, this is nonsense, you cannot publish it. Okay, so be careful of that. I'm not going to read through that. Um, you must just know, when you look at information, check for the real thing. So, and here I'm coming back to what I start with. Your intuition may be your best tool. As you learn from experience, you will progressively get better. 
at your searches. You are going to battle the first time. It is going to be difficult. I'm lecturing this subject for 12 years now. This is the most difficult part for a student, is to get their articles. Accuracy is not guaranteed as the information on the internet is not always accurate. Right, and that's my final say on this.